I'm not much of a Mac person and didn't actually want to do a lot of Apple stuff on the channel, but considering that um, this was given to me as a gift, um, I had kind of no other real reason to cover it. And you know, I started thinking about it and it's like, you know, there's going to be people that are going to want Apple on the channel probably. Um, while I'm not the biggest fan, I always need something Apple related for our local church. Since they use a lot of Apple equipment, so it's just kind of a matter of time. I said, okay, I'm just going to pull the trigger. Well, this was given to me uh, by my brother. His channel will be linked in the description. And, um, you know, he's a great guy and whatnot. Watch his channel. He's got some good stuff on there. I don't know if he'll do Apple stuff too much, but the only things I really know about this one um, are this is a early 2016. 13 inch MacBook Pro. We have the Core i7 dual core processor out of the Skylake or 6th generation. 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD. Um, I'm presuming the drive has been upgraded at that um, from the specs from everymac.com. I didn't see a 1 terabyte option, so either this was a late in life or something like that. Um, because the largest I saw was 256 or 512. So I'm assuming then this is the 512 gig and not the terabyte. But I could be wrong. Ah, okay, there's the one terabyte. So yes, my brother was correct. This is a one terabyte model. And we'll double check that later as I turn it on. I've already set the machine up. I've already booted it. I've actually been using it for a few days. Um, just wanted to make sure everything was good. And um, <laughs> this is out of the dongle gate generation. So what you're gonna notice, I've got two USB-C or Thunderbolt ports on this side. Nothing. Two more USB-C Thunderbolt ports here and a headphone jack, which I do appreciate the headphone jack. And that's basically it. You get nothing else. Uh, if you wanted more, um, don't buy an Apple. <laughs> now, this one's not in the best condition. Uh, I was told by my brother that this sent, spent a lot of time on the charger. The battery is in okay condition uh, as far as hours of life. Um, as far as just straight up using it, uh, about four hours. You might be able to squeeze six out of it if you're doing lighter tasks, but... On average, four hours, which is respectable, especially for 2016. It has very few cycles on it, and we'll see that when we fire it up. But um, this thing boots really well. It's quite fast. Uh, being a 2016, it is limited to Mac OS Monterey, um, which for now, I'm just going to run the security updates out on this one. But there is a chance, with the help of a friend of mine, we're going to get to play with OpenCore, which is... A fun project for old Macs to get them to run newer versions of Mac OS. So I guess stay tuned for the someday of that. But um, yeah, I guess at uh, at this point we'll uh, we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and fire it up and see how she goes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this puppy fired up. See, hi, yes, see my shiny face. Um, so it's not really that big a deal, but uh, it does turn on when you turn the lid on. That's kind of a typical Apple thing. I've never had one do that. All my old ones never did that. Um, but you can see it boots up pretty darn fast. So that's not really an issue at all. Um, give me just one moment here. Let me put in my password and then we'll log in and take a look around Mac OS. Um, not too shabby of a thing. And you can see we're running Mac OS. I'll go ahead and pull um, this up. You won't get to see my serial number, obviously, but you can see we're sitting here on Mac OS uh, Monterey. Um, and there's our 3.3 gigahertz dual core i7, our 16 gigs, and our Iris 
Intel graphics. This is when Intel graphics actually started getting better and that's a good thing, trust me. And if I go into system report, see some more fun stuff. And you can see our one terabyte of flash storage. Our display, which is 2560 by 1600. It is quite a lot of pixels because this is actually a retina display. Now, you'll note as you saw the darker parts of the screen, you won't notice it. But if I were to say pull up Google and go to maybe google.com. Google search. Or even better yet. Pull up a white background, which is what I was kind of going for. Screen this. And you can kind of see here on the sides, yeah, I'm having some yellowing and whatnot. The retina display on this thing is starting to give way. Um, it's delaminating. If you run into one of these, it is very, very, very common of an issue. Um, it's not really the end of the world, but uh, it is a thing. But if you go like 13 inch MacBook Pro display, Get rid of a couple of these here. And you get here on eBay. And you see 13 inch LCD panels for MacBook Pro. You can see as we start scrolling down, they've actually come down quite a lot in price. So you're talking between 120, maybe 150 bucks. Sometimes you might be able to find like a complete working LCD, like this 1278 here. Um, and you might be able to find it. Here's like one for like 160. There's even a replacement touch bar, which is something this thing does have. It's a little weird to get used to, but you can like, you know, grab it. You can turn the display up, you can turn it down. It's, it's certainly a different way of doing computing. I'd rather have a touch screen, but that is a thing. So it is able to, we also have the butterfly keyboard of death. So, 13 inch, whoop, that's the cap lock key. And this is the butterfly keyboard of death. So if you do have one of these, never get it dirty. And uh, I was on here the other night just uh, go with a 2016 MacBook Pro keyboard. So we can't get into one of those. I see. Oh, I guess they can only do top case. Top case. Because, unfortunately, with these MacBooks, yeah, see, here we go. The battery is glued to the top case. So if you have one of these, uh, rip. <laughs> You're going to have to buy a whole top case and basically move your motherboard over. So, I mean, you could see 70, 80 bucks, you know, I mean, that one's the keyboard's pretty shot, but here's one relatively decent condition. Um, you're going to want to transfer your touch bar over um, because that'll have your uh, touch ID and whatnot, which I do have set up on this thing. It's super nice. Um, but you can see, you can get parts for these things relatively cheap these days. It didn't used to be that case, um, but you definitely can. And yeah, you can get into the nitty gritty of this with the dual core i7. Um, and the nice thing is we have two Thunderbolt buses that each have two Thunderbolt ports. If I hook this up to a type C dock, you could definitely uh, run multiple displays off this thing. And it's quite the snappy experience. And you can see I'm running it, you know, pretty reasonable charge at this point. I just charged it. And there's other things, you know, there's some cracks here in the corner and things like that. It is most certainly 
not a perfect machine. So now that we got everything up and running and whatnot, and I've showed you around the computer a little bit, now we go get to have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to go in here, and we're going to open up Geekbench, and then apparently Novabench has updated since the last time I've needed it. So we're just going to go ahead and do some benchmarking. Yes, we'll want to open that. There's a license agreement. Oh, well, Geekbench, I guess you could update your software a little bit. just say later because I don't care. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this benchmark and then I'll be right back and we'll go ahead and look at the results. Alright so that took a few minutes um, and it looks like we got a single core score of 1117 and a multi-core of 2251. That seems to be uh, I don't think that's terrible I mean we are a dual core i7 processor so you know that's that's quite limiting and whatnot. And you see we've got some other information in here. Which is uh, rather amusing, I would say. And you know, in the process, she has gotten quite warm. Um, but I think it's time that we go ahead and we uh, think it's time we go ahead and fire up Nova Bench. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll get started with Nova Bench. Now, I haven't used it in a little while, but I know it's a pretty comprehensive test. We've got command line, portable, battery, temperature, stress tests, bottlenecks, etc. I'm going to go ahead and hit the generic test, and then we can turn around and see what the results are. All right, so we're back, and you can see we've got some scores here to take a look at. Um, see, so we've got 231 for the CPU got 21 for the graphics eh, that's kind of what I expected it is Intel Iris graphics which is better than most that I've dealt with out of this generation it's still Intel integrated graphics they're usually pretty bad got a 230 memory score and a 192 on the storage which you know probably isn't too bad let's look at that Temperature, it looks like we we're about 73% efficient, and GPU was very efficient, which kind of makes sense. Um, I, that will be that as far as the benchmark goes. I'd say she's a little toasty right now. She's probably not too happy with me, um, but overall, pretty reasonable performer. I'm going to try to do a follow-up video where my brother, who has bought an M3 MacBook Pro, will run through some similar tests. Um, and be able to kind of give you a comparison to how this performs to a newer uh, M3 MacBook Pro. Um, but she runs pretty darn well, all things considered. And um, yeah, and you know it shuts right down. You can see some of the scratching of the keyboard in the display again, and see my shiny face. Let me just wave hi real quick. Um, certainly not the perfect computer but for what it is you know what it'll do stuff at the church just fine it'll do stuff elsewhere just fine and it gets reasonable battery life and as long as you can deal with the Thunderbolt ports everything's fine I've had a couple instances already where I really needed a dongle um, I do have some type C dongles that are C to A's and I'll probably be using those or A to C's so I'll be using those where I can, um, but otherwise, you know what? The other cool thing too is this still supports boot camp, so we can get into Windows on Mac shenanigans. We can get to, um, yeah, we can get into Windows on Mac shenanigans. We can get onto Linux on Mac shenanigans. I like Linux. Um, in fact, that's mostly what this channel is probably going to be sort of centered around because I like Linux shenanigans. Uh, but at the very least, we can do VirtualBox stuff on here, and it's all kinds of good fun. And before I forget, um, my brother, A-Class Computing, he'll also be down in the description. Um, great guy. He, uh, I learned a lot of my shenanigans from him, so the two of us will probably continue doing shenanigans and be enjoying it for years to come. So if you like this video, go ahead and like the video. If you want to see more content like this and other shenanigans that I do, let me know, and let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm open to suggestions, different projects and whatnot. 
I've obviously got a big old Linux rig sitting here that I do a lot of the work on out here. I've got MacBooks, I've got Windows PCs, and much, much more. I've got plenty of things to play around with, so I guess let me know what you want to see in the comments down below.